This webinar this morning will focus on the Go Wild resources for kids, whether it's for fun, homework, or just good old curiosity. These tools you'll find are great for not only kids, but library staff and parents. We're going to start here at the Go Wild page. Notice that we've created a subject area called Kids Resources. There's also one for student research. If you work with older students, take a look at the student research category. But this one will focus more on those appropriate for grade school and middle school. But you'll see that we do have resources pre-K through high school as well as academic. And many of these resources overlap. On the Kids Resources page, let me scroll down a little bit. Alphabetically, Book Flicks and the Britannicas, Culture Grams, eLibrary, Kids in Info Bits, and Kids Search. Then a couple from EBSCO there, MAS Ultra, which is appropriate for the high school age. Middle Search, of course, for middle school, junior high. Novelist K-8, a primary search for elementary. A great one called ProQuest Learning Literature that's part of eLibrary Curriculum Edition. Searchesaurus for the really young new searchers. And then Student Research Center, Student Resource Center, and Student Resources in Context, pages that have pulled a lot of information together for kids doing research. We're going to start this morning by comparing two resources, Kid Info Bits and Kid Search. Kid Info Bits is a Gale product. You'll see that there are icons so that the new searcher can just click on the picture or single word access. So for example, we could click on History and Social Studies. They have more categories, so it teaches them to be more specific in their topic. So let's put, get U.S. Presidents here. And then they can select one of the U.S. Presidents. So without trying to type, they've gotten to some information. Notice with Kids Info Bits that you have tabs across the top. So they have access to reference material, which has come up here, magazines, newspaper items, and if the tabs are green, there's no information behind them. So then they just jump down here to images. But let's go back to the reference material. Notice that it's brought up two different reference items on Jimmy Carter one out of Kid Info Bits and one out of the Columbia Encyclopedia. And notice to the left of each title, there are some symbols. The green symbol, as it's saying here at the top, is reading level easy, which in Kids Info Bits is more the K through 2. Then the triangle indicates a reading level more difficult, so that's going to take it from grades 3 to 5. Off to the right, it tells you what kind of resource it is, so these are both biographies. If I open the easy one on Jimmy Carter, here's the biographical information. The same thing for the magazines. Notice that they have the symbols to the left as well. Newspapers haven't got those symbols. They haven't been assigned by the publisher. So in Kids Info Bits, if you're looking at those levels of reading, these are based on publisher's age recommendation for the whole publication, not individual articles. Any of these articles can be put in a what's called My Backpack. So if I just click in the little box here, it will now put items up in my backpack here at the top. We go back to reference, we can put one from the reference items, and those will be up here in my backpack. Those are only going to stay there for this particular session, so they can't assign it a password and come back to it later. But it does let students compile this, print this page out, or just print the reference items or print the newspaper items and it gets some, gives them some brief citation information. If I go back home and do a different search, so for example let's just type a search in this time. So I'm going to search Yellowstone National Park up here in the search box. It's telling me that I have 159 items and I can click on view. Again, I've got my tabs across the top and it begins with my reference items. This includes facts about states and then encyclopedia citations, the magazine items, and notice again we've got our reading level. I can put items from this search in my backpack. Now if I come up to the top right, 
look in my backpack, you'll see I have from both of my searches. So if the student has started a new search or they're combining search or branching out, it will contain all of this for them at the end of their search to do their printing. One of the things to be aware of in Kids Info Bits is if you're doing an exact phrase, it's best to put it in quotes, especially if it includes some stop words. We're going to compare this now to Kids Search, which is a EBSCO database. So I could go back to Kids Search, or I just clicked on K in the alphabetic. You can search from the main page there, or just click on the title and come into the database. You'll notice again that we can search by these icons. So for example, I could click on Geography. But rather than having icons, now I have to select something under Geography. So for example, Mountains, Lakes, and Rivers. I don't have to put anything in the search box, and I can just click on Go. Like we saw in Kids Info Bits, I've got tabs at the top here. But this time I've got, in addition to the reference newspapers and magazines, I also have animals, biographies, transcripts, country and state reports, and they've included primary source documents. The primary source documents are going to, of course, be a higher Lexile reading score. We have 49,000 plus items on this search, but you'll see on the left-hand side, I can narrow my results by subject, and I can narrow my results by publication just by clicking on one of those. So, for example, cobblestone. And now I just have 64 items, all of them from the Cobblestone Magazine. You'll see that I have Lexile reading scores assigned to these. Um, so I can pick a Lexile score, browse through these. If we go back to the main page and do a search, I can do the same thing. And I'll see that same list of results. So let's compare it to Yellowstone. like we did in the other one. So here's our results for Yellowstone National Park. Down the center we've got our Lexile reading scores and again we can narrow by subject and we can narrow by publication. At the bottom make sure that students have noticed that they have more than one page and on the right hand side you'll see that there are folders that you can put items into folders this will hold on to them. You can also assign it a password, so this will last beyond that first search. Some of the publications you see here are Discover, Geographic Treasures, for example, um, Geographic Traveler, let me scroll down a little bit more, Encyclopedias, and if we wanted to just narrow by a publication, we could do that as well. Let me click on More. It'll open up and you can click on one of those and update your search. If we go into one of these, so let's look at one in a particular publication full text. Here's our item and if we scroll down, there's the full text. You'll see that we have our Lexile score, our word count, and if we scroll down, our words that we searched are there in bold. I can go back to my results list here at the top. I can also print, email, save, or add these items to a folder. I'm going to go back to the home page. One of the things that might be of use to you is down here at the bottom. It's called the EBSCO support site. Anytime you're using an EBSCO resource, you can come into their EBSCO support site, go into their knowledge base, or into their training site. Here you'll find some trainer guides, some tutorials about specific EBSCO resources. The next one we're going to look at in our kids' resources is called Search-A-Source. This is also an EBSCO resource, but they're focusing on the very early searchers. Again, they've got an icon to search with, so they can just click on Animals and then select an animal. So they could click on insects and spiders. And now they've got success in going all the way into a full text article and they didn't have to get tripped up by typing. We want them to have success in their research as they're learning their typing skills as well. 
Here again, we've got our Lexile reading score, our full text count, our article, and it has a table of contents, so you can jump straight to that part within the article. I'm going to go back out to the main page of Searchasaurus. In addition, like we've seen on the other ones, we can also conduct a search using the search box. So we put in Pioneers. Notice too that I can also select a Lexile reading score. I'm going to leave it open for now on all. And we have 2,900 items. If I go back, we can also narrow that if we select a reading score, Lexile reading score. Now all of mine should fall into that Lexile range. And you'll see at the top, my results for that level are just in magazines and the books and encyclopedias. They also include a dictionary, encyclopedia, and a picture file here. So they can look for specific searches and then add pictures to their report by clicking on the picture file and doing a search there. The next one we're going to compare is called Primary Search. Primary Search is an EBSCO database. It's going to be this similar to the Kids Search, but instead of using the icons, it's a regular EBSCO resource. So, but it's going to be searching the same things. So, depending on where the kids are in their level of searching, they can use that Kids Search or come into Primary Search. Once they've used this Primary Search in EBSCO, then when they're searching other EBSCO resources, they're going to all look the same. You've got the search box here at the top, the default here to Boolean phrase, but they can also do the all or any search terms. If they're getting very few items for their search, there's also a box here under search options that says also search within the full text of the article. So just rather than just looking in the title and the abstract, they can search their terms in the full text. I would caution you against using only full text here because we have a link within the results list and the resource page to get back to see where else we might own that in full text and I'll show that to you here when we do a search. Primary Search has 80 plus elementary school magazines. The articles are assigned the Lexile rather than just the publication. And this also includes the Encyclopedia of Animals. We used to have a separate link to that, but they folded it into their primary search. There's also image files here, so you'll get photos and maps and flags. So let's conduct a search here on the Oregon Trail. Our list of results are down the center. We have related images here off to the right. And down the left, like we saw before, we can narrow by type, so we can do periodicals or reference books, we can do by subject, and we can do by publication. As we scroll down, you'll see that there's a little icon to the right of each title. It's called a preview icon. If you hold your cursor over that, it will bring up the abstract information for you. So you don't have to click on the title, go read the abstract, and come back out to your main list. I'm going to click on Going West here out of Apple Seeds. Notice that it is in full text. On the right hand side I can print, email, or save this. I can also click on and get citation information. And there's the full text of our article. I can click on Results List to come back to my main page. And let's scroll down to one that is not in full text. Here you'll see the preview icon and it has no indication of HTML or PDF. If I click into that resource, you'll see it's just our abstract information. On the left hand side, there's a link that says check full text availability. If I click on that, it's been set up so now it will look to see what other resource we own that publication in full text. So if it's not in full text in the one you're searching, you can see that it is available in full text in ProQuest Central. You'll also see that you can check for print availability. So if you have one that's not available in full text, you can click check print availability and it will see who in Wildcat owns that on their shelves. Okay, so let's look at some 
different resources for kids. I'm going to go back to our kids resources page and let's take a look at Britannica Online. This may be a source that you've skipped over, but it's worth taking a look at. We own seven different versions. Here on the main page you'll see we have Britannica Public Library, Britannica Schools, we also have Britannica Academic. Within each one of these are several versions. So let's start with the Public Library version. We have the main Public Library edition with a search box here of course at the top. You can browse by subject and by biography. So if you're looking for a biography, you, there's a browse link here. You'll see these are long alphabetic lists that you can just keep scrolling through. But here at the top, there's a little box that you can put your first letters in. So for example, we're going to put ALD and you just wanted to browse, jump farther down, weren't sure of a spelling, for example, you can come in this way and now we can select a biography. And it takes us into the main Britannica online. So here's our citation or our encyclopedia entry for Buzz Aldrin. You'll see that you have links to other information within the encyclopedia. I'm going to go back out to Britannica here. Also on this page, you'll see there are research tools. There's a video collection which has uh, long and short videos and we'll look at those more when we go into the kids edition. On this version there's also a world data analyst so you can put in data and compare it and bring up charts and graphs. You can compare countries, look at an atlas. There's also a 4,000 entry notable quotation file here and Gateway to the Classics which includes 225 works by 140 different authors. So really nice to get a taste of some authors works and they are the full text of the document. They also do featured spotlights on various topics here. Those are worth looking at. There's some on the Olympics, Black History, the Titanic. So the full power of Britannica behind that, there's some amazing pages and worth taking a peek at. Let's go back up to the top here. You'll see above on the banner line, you can jump to Britannica for Kids. So let's take a look at that one. On the kids version, you'll see that we also have a search box. We can search the encyclopedia and the dictionary. But they can also browse by topic. So we could click on language arts, for example, and they can begin to narrow their topic here. Also on the main page for kids is the student center. They have something new called Geography Explorer, which is interactive activity for kids uh, learning about their world. They have also a new one called Animal Kingdom, where kids can explore by animals or by habitat. So if we went into, for example, let's look at birds. They can see some video and some images. And if you scroll down, there's a list of those available here for them to get more information about and the quite a variety. So I'm going to pick the Quetzal. And here's the encyclopedia inter entry for Quetzal. Notice that there's a little my, uh, audio symbol here where it will read each one of the various paragraphs. So we can scroll down, click on that again, and it will read that paragraph. There are images available on this as well. And if we scroll back up, notice on the left hand side is a table of contents so we can link right to that specific section. Below that at the very end is your citation information and you can get it in MLA, APA, Chicago style, etc. And there's a link to export that if you have that software. I'm going to come back out again to the main page and let's go back to the student center here. There are learning materials here which can be really handy if you're setting up homework session stations, you've got homework help, working with your folks at home. For example, if we click on language arts, you'll see it's broken down by grade and subject and there are lessons and exercises and activities to go along with those different um, subjects. Back out to our student center, there's a timeline. Students can compare countries so they can put two countries in, lay them side by side, see their flags, population information, cultural information. 
They also have a media collection, so you can embed pictures of planets or artwork or literary people. There's also some helpful handouts on writing a book review, science report, or an oral, oral presentation. They always have a spotlight, so they highlight something during the week, important people, there are news headlines, scroll back up, and they also include something called Discover America. If we click on Learn More, it brings up the map, and we can click on Wyoming, for example, and it will bring up information about Wyoming. And notice that you can print this page, email it, or get the citation information. So a lot of good material as part of this Britannica online to take a look at, but it also does have a search box so we can search for material within the encyclopedia. So I'm just going to search baseball. Down the center are our results within the encyclopedia. Notice that on the left hand side I can select Compton's, which is the middle school version, or the elementary encyclopedia. I can also go straight to media or websites. On the right hand side is a list of our media that's available, whether it's images or video. And there's a link here at the bottom that says more media. Be sure and watch for that. I'm going to click on the first entry here, baseball. And there's our entry, including our videos and images. One of the nice things here uh, in Encyclopedia is if you double click on a word, so I'm going to hold my cursor over past time and just double click. It will open up the dictionary and give me the definition of that word. It opens in a separate window so I can just close that out. I'm going to go back and we'll compare that to what it looks like in the um, elementary. That was the Comptons. And we'll open up baseball in elementary here. And you'll see it's just a shorter version of the citation information and the um, encyclopedia citation. There's also audio for these. There's also something here called Save to Workspace. Kids can put items in a workspace, assign it a password and a username, and they can come back to it. So they can be putting videos in here, encyclopedia articles in here, and web information, all of that save it and then come back to it, whether they're at home or at school or the public library, and build their reports. Now we're going to take a look at another Britannica, and let's look at Britannica for schools. We looked at Britannica Public Library for kids, and now we'll look at Britannica for school. Notice that we have elementary, middle school, high school, as well as Britannica Learning Zone for the pre-K to 2. You can also search all levels, which we'll do. Down at the bottom are some resources. There are the learning materials that we already looked at that gave us the activities and uh, worksheets and websites. There's training materials here as well. So there's PowerPoint on using Britannica. There's some guided tours, some how-to documents, so using the workspace, which is really great, downloading Britannica videos, and standards-based educational materials. There's also curriculum standards information so that you can find the Wyoming standards, for example. And I can select a topic, so I got to do a grade, a subject, and then we can get those for Wyoming. And they correlate to parts in this encyclopedia. In uh, Britannica, there's teacher resources, lesson plans, interactive content, uh, videos, all sorts of things that can be used for kids doing research and for teachers and library staff in providing information back to the students. If we click on View This Level for Elementary, you'll see we have the full encyclopedia for elementary school. And again, we've got these features, the Discover America, and the search box. If I click on Britannica School Information, I come back. So I can go to a specific level, or I can search all levels. So let's search all levels to start, and we'll start on Olympics. Because we searched all, all levels, you'll see that we've got 
from right or left to right the encyclopedia for high school, middle school, and elementary. On the right hand side there's additional content so we can link to journals and magazines for grades 1 to 5 for example. So here they're getting items out of Calliope and Boy's Life and I can look at it for grades 6 to 9 for example and notice that I have more advanced journals. We have Newsweek, Plastic News, etc. There's also uh, links to websites for those specific grades and as we scroll down again those multimedia selections. There's also something here called the concise encyclopedia so you can get just short little bits so for example Special Olympics and you'll see we just have a nice short entry for that out of the concise encyclopedia. So let's select the Olympic Games here. This time I'm going to select it out of the high school level so I'm going to scroll down select Olympic Games. When you select some of the more advanced you'll see we have a broader table of contents here on the left hand side. Also notice that there are 72 pages here so it isn't just this short entry you can use the next page or use the table of contents on the left hand side. At the top there's also links to maps, images, tables, media, related articles if I click on tables, they've drawn together tables that go along with this topic. Okay, back on the main page. So again, you can search for different levels specifically, or you can search all levels. And all of them have this added content worth looking at. The learning materials, the biographies, timelines, dictionaries, atlases, video clips. I'm going to go into the video clips. There are video clips and extended play videos. The video clips are under these specific classes. So for example, mathematics. And you can go into short little videos about say right angles or triangles. The extended plays, let's go into those. So for example, let's look at American History. You'll see that they have all of these different series. One of the series being um, Great Native American Leader Series or the Great Campaigns of the Civil War. If I click on that, you'll see that these are 30 minute long videos that you can use about these different topics. So they could be used in the library, they could be used in the classroom. Students can use that to additionally add information to their studies. Another one that we have under Kids Resources is a great one called Culture Grams. This one is going to let them look at countries and cultures so they can get country information, day-to-day -day information, what, what their history is, what their population is, things like that. The Kids, States, and Provinces editions are written at the upper elementary grades. The World edition is written at a junior high and up. We're going to just focus on the kids edition today. This one includes 106 countries. There's a drop down menu at the top left or students can select their countries and continents here on the map. So I'm going to select South America and then Peru. This gives some highlights, some did you knows about the country of Peru. So for example on the did you knows it's the birthplace of the potato and they produce more than 3,000 different varieties. On the right hand side you can get a map and print it out in PDF form. The flag, they have their national image and at the bottom you can hear the country anthem. You can also hear the pronunciation of the country name. So if it's one that's kind of hard. So that's the beginnings of the country anthem for Peru. On the right hand side at the top you'll see there's a photo and video gallery, slideshows, there's interviews of people from the country, famous people, and recipes. If you click on Peru recipes you can see some dishes of the country and how to make them. On the left hand side for each one of the countries you'll see that there's people in places, history, lifestyle, society, 
and culture facts and contact information, where to learn more. I'm going to go into some of these, so let's look at the timeline. So I can bring up a timeline here that that can print out. There's information about food, so we already saw that recipes, but now you can see information, general information about food. On the right hand side, there's interviews of different people from the country talking about their favorite food. Notice this is just a beginning here, and you can read the full interview. One of the things I like on this for kids is under lifestyle is life as a kid. This section tells you about what life is like for kids in this country. You can print and email it and off to the right again is an interview and here's a kid named Carlos, he's 12 years old and an interview about his life and again there's a link to the full interview. There's also information about government, money, and economy so they can get some specifics about the country. I'm going to go back to the main page here of the Kids Edition. In addition to finding out about the country at the bottom here, there's a link to FAQs. This is really helpful because it will tell you who's writing these, how often they're updating them, what they're updating, information about using the photos and the slideshows, how to save them to your PowerPoint. So a lot of information here about using the pieces within um, reports or finding out information about this particular web website. There's also training resources that you might want to take a look at. Within the training resources if, is information about this database, but there's also a quick start guide, a PowerPoint, there's sample searches, there's also a video, and there's some sample simple lesson sheets and activities here and some standards based correlation information. And that's here at the bottom under FAQ's training resources. There's also a big teaching activities PDF that might be of interest, so take a look at that one. Most of these resources have that information if you look for links at the bottom of the page that gives you activities, training, tutorials, and additional information to use. So very helpful things from the vendors as well. Now we're going to go on to another one, again very different resource for kids and working with kids, and that's Novelist K-8. We have general novelists, but we also have one focused for the K-8 age range. What's nice about this one is in addition to being a reader's advisory tool, getting kids to their next book, there are also book talks, book discussion guides, um, taking and using uh, picture books, extending them, activities. So we'll look at all the different ways to use this particular resource. On the left hand side, you'll see that you can get to recommended read lists and you can break it down by ages. 0 to 8, 9 to 12, or the teen range. Then we can look at, for example, adventure stories and boy adventures. This will get you to some lists of books to help if you're working with a student who likes this sort of book. At the top, it's telling us what this list is built on, its ages, and its grade level. If we scroll down, there are the recommended books for this topic. You can view it in a grid or title only or brief, depending on how you want to print this out and then or print this particular view here. If we scroll down you can see we can go into a particular book, read a description about that book. You'll also notice that we get a Lexile reading score and we can check Wildcat. So we can click on check Wildcat to see if it's available in one of our libraries. Whoops. There's also reviews here. In addition to these reviews out of book list, school library journal, etc. Up at the top under the um, image, you can also link to Goodreads, so you can see what other folks are saying about this book, including what's great, what kids are saying about this book. I'm going to come back out to the main page. So those recommended reads are here along the left-hand side. They explore some new books here in the middle and recommend some other books if you like those books 
down the center. So you can just hold your cursor over it, get a little description about that book. Great way to find out about a lot of other books that are out there. You can also type a search in, so I'm going to type summer reading, but I don't want it as a category, I want it as a title. So I'm going to search that title, summer reading, and it brings up summer reading is killing me. It gives me the age range for that book. If it's part of a series, it's telling me it's in this Time Warp Trio series and it's number seven. If I click on that link, it will show me all the books in that series. It gives me appeal terms here, genre, storyline, pace, tone, and writing style, my grade level, and again, my reviews. To use this as a reader's advisory tool, if this was a book that they'd read or really liked, on the right hand side I have search for more. Here I can take that genre, storyline, pace, etc. and find new books just by clicking in the boxes and click search. So in addition to this book it will bring up more that fit that category. And again I've got my check Wildcat link here. And I can see what libraries in the state own that book or in my county. I'm going to go back to the main page. So in addition to those reader's advisory tools, up at the top there's a link here called Book Talks. So if you wanted to have a small book talk about a book that you were going to do, I can select all teen or ages 9 to 12 reading level. I can browse by title or by author. Or I can put in a word here and look alphabetically. So let's just look at one of these. I'm going to select um, down, just scroll down, let you see a few of those. We'll select Al Capone Does My Shirts. It gives you again the ages, the grades, and here's the short little book talk information about that. It, within this book talking, it gives a link to the book within Novelist. So again, we can get the reviews and we can do the search for more if you want to form, find more books about it. Also at the top here under the More drop down, we have book discussion guides. So we can look at, again, by reading level, all or teen, title, or author. We can select alphabetically here and browse through if we wanted to. So we can look at holes, which is coming up a lot. Or let's look at the teen books. And again, it brings that up we can go into the book discussion guide and it gives us author information, summary information, questions, and at the very bottom some further reading. If you were looking for, let's look at Hunger Games for example here. Notice that we have that information, but if you come down here, we can, in addition to those reviews, there are lists and articles, and you'll see that there's a book discussion guide and a book talk for the Hunger Games, and since that's a big story, if you're needing that information, you can look these books up and find out if there's book talks and book discussion guides for you for a specific book just by entering the title. So this might be really helpful. You can also brush up on the Hunger Games, for example, if you haven't read it yet. Back up under more, there's picture book extenders as well. So you can take picture books and get activities. So I'm going to scroll down here and let's pick April and Esme. And scroll down, here's the picture book extender. There's a summary about the book. Notice that we can print it out in PDF. And discussion questions, activities, related titles. So a lot of information here for not only the kids in getting to books, but for those helping them get to books and book talking, book discussions, extending these books in the classroom. Back on the main page, in addition to using these links at the top, off to the right hand side is a link called Teaching with Books. And you'll see there's that book talking link, book discussion guides, and the picture book extenders as well as some annotated bibliographies for these various grades and subjects. On the right hand side, if you want to learn more about doing Reader's Advisory, that's there and there's a Lexile reading chart. You can also get 
newsletters here and they feature some information. So right now they're featuring genre outlines for older kids. So if you want to get caught up on fantasy fiction, for example, horror fiction, here's some book lists and information. One last one regarding books, and that's BookFlix. BookFlix is totally different here. It's pairing fictional fiction books, videos, as well as nonfiction to go with it. So it's pairing up these books. You'll see that you can select pairs by animals and nature, earth and sky, people and places. I'm going to select family and community. Then you'll see all the different book pairs. So we've got Amazing Grace is the book video, and then we can read one about Jackie Robinson. To look at more of them, you just turn the page here to look at your different pairs. You'll notice that some of them are also available in Spanish. I'm going to click on Go on this particular book pair. You'll see at the top they list a lesson plan to go along with this book pair. So you get your learning objectives before viewing the, que viewing the video. And we'll go back to our pair. So that's here in lesson plan. On the left hand side, there are puzzlers, meet the author information. But let's go into the book. And I've already loaded this up, so let's go into what it looks like when we have the book up. Chato's Kitchen. Chato, a low riding cat with six stripes, was slinking toward a sparrow. So you can see what they've done is, in essence, um, videoed the actual book. If you want to switch it to Spanish, I just click on the cloud up here that says Espanol. And now it will load the book back up and in Spanish. And I'm going to bring that up. This is why I had it loaded up before, so it got through all of that introductory. While that's coming up, um, do take a look at the puzzlers. It helps kids with before and after, factor fiction, and guides them through some of that, as well as the whole Meet the Author. You can, on both the Meet the Author and Exploring the Web, you can get information uh, read to you as well as um, read along. So let's bring it up in Spanish here. Chato, un gato de seis rayas y caminar arrastrado iba deslizándose. Notice that I have read along on, so it's moving along with my words. You can turn that off and just use it then for story time and it will just load it now without the read along on. You can also, once that loads up, make it into full screen. So again, you can just set it up at a station with some headphones on and use it as a reading station. So now we'll have it without the words, and we won't wait for that here. Okay, so that's how you get the book pairs if you wanna see then your nonfiction here. They just open the book up and they can read through the book turning the pages as they go. If the word's highlighted in yellow, if you hold your cursor over it, it will give you the definition. Notice there's a little ear here. Recipe. You, if you Directions click on that. Making, whoops. Recipe. Directions for making food. So it will read the definition to them. The puzzlers. Here's what that looks like. You can go to word match, fact or fiction, or which came first. This is a great one to check out if you want to know more about it. Up here at the top, there's a link to resources. This will let you see all the book pairs, and you can sort them. So if you wanted only those that were available in Spanish, or sort by grade level or Lexile, you can do that with these word pairs. There's also some classroom activities and some using the paired texts at the top. Okay, I'm going to go back out to Kids Resources. That's just a quick overview of the kinds of things that are here focused on resources for kids. You notice that we have a huge variety of information. I want to go back to the Wyoming State Library homepage here. We have webinar archives and a Discover series 
So I'm going to click on Webinar Archive here on the Wyoming State Library homepage. If you scroll down through these, these are webinars we've done before. Here you're going to find webinars on those for kids. There's one on Culture Grams, there's one on Novelist, History Study Center, the eLibrary Curriculum Edition, which will include that ProQuest Learning Literature that we saw there on the Kids Edition, and more. So scroll through these. These give the. If you do want shorter ones, let me go back up here and back to the home page. There's a Discover It series. And under that, if you're looking at those for kids, there's a category here called Hands on Tools for Pre K to 8. And that will give you information about book flicks and novelists. Again, comparing that Kids Search and Kid Info Bits, Search is source. So take a look at those if you want some more information uh, in these other webinars. All right, so that concludes today's webinar on kids' resources. If you have a microphone and you have a question, go ahead and click the little raise your hand and I can unmute you. Or you can put a question in the chat box or email me at any time, uh, chris.vanberg at wyo.gov. Or you can give me a call, 777-3642, and we can walk through any of these resources. I can also set up a one-on-one -on -one webinar with you, and we can put these up on the screen and walk through any of these. We can also set up one-on-one -on -one for your building, your library, whatever might be useful to you. So let me know, and we can answer some questions or wander through these more specifically. Thank you all for coming today.